I'm coming, I'm coming. All right. Uh, just getting situated here. Give me just a minute, please. <laughs> okay pardon me I'm trying to get all the coughs out before the live stream starts not always successful hey good morning afternoon or evening wherever you might be in time and space getting us here and we're making our way back home. I'm making my way back home. But if you tune in, I'm, I'm including us. You're the VIP here. Uh-oh. Right when I go live, what? Getting messages. What now? Oh, I've got an alert. Health coverage is a few clicks away. Uh, Yeah, they must have heard me coughing. Like, he needs health coverage. So now, it seems like they're basing ads on if you're coughing. Siri, you're listening, aren't you? Siri's listening and is like, oh, we heard him cough. Let's uh let's send him a uh an ad. I have been inundated with ads. I've been running all the Trojan scanners and everything else and the AVG and checking everything and uh one particular website that I have had to even block manually in Windows. Um virtual online manuals has been causing me so much problems with all their ads popping up. All right, so check this out. Pulled up the weather for, um, I think I have to go to manually. Turn off my automatic scene switcher for a moment. I'm just switching back and forth. I'm having problems with it displaying the site properly just by clicking. But check out the weather, the wind patterns for the day in the United States. I mean, uh, and I'm not sure I should probably bring this down to we at ground level? Either way, but across the United States, look at how heavy some of these winds are down here. So we're up here. We're here. And we're going this way. Oh, we're going to have a nice tailwind today. Um... Current conditions. So again, we're right in here somewhere. So it's a little bit different when you get down to the ground. But overall, the winds were pushing that way. Okay, so we've still got uh, pushing us down from the north, and we're heading south a little bit anyway. Then we're going to be heading over into Reno, right? Either way, heading this way. And then making our way back home. So, the winds usually aren't too much of a problem. But, um, you're supposed to, you know, again, if you're, let's say you're going to do this for real. And I'm trying to trying to learn how to do this for real. If you're going to be a real pilot, you need to check the weather every day. You need to become completely familiar with uh, what, you know, the weather patterns in your area. And seven days before you fly, uh, fly, you should be checking the weather every single day. And that's so weird because it changes so often, especially in Colorado. But I'm starting to notice over time looking at these, uh, these maps that I do, I do start seeing patterns like, oh, well, usually in the morning, the winds are this way. Usually in the afternoon, the winds are doing one of these. Or this time of day, it, I understand it now a lot more. I just never really understood it. Because I'm like, well, it changes so much. How can you possibly plan for something like that seven days ahead? But I'm starting to get it, Master. It's starting to sink in. Okay. So looking at some other things here. Uh, run over really quick. You turn back on the scene switcher. Do 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 that. All right, so that's working. Okay, so now back into NeoFly. Um, this job is taking us pretty much on the path that we want to go. 
So it's going to be taking us to South Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe Airport. I thought we were going to Reno. I guess not. Anyway, this is exactly kind of where we said we wanted to go. We wanted to head to San, uh, Sacramento and fly around that a little bit. And then uh, start making our way back home and stopping by Tahoe. Let's go ahead and take this job. Let me grab my headphones. I've been sending uh, passive-aggressive tweets again, uh, chatting with um, Pretzel again this morning. Um, I'm, I'm not really digging what's going on. I've been complaining to you about my copyright issues playing their music. And 90% of it is fine. I haven't had a problem with like 90%. But there are some artists that just keep popping up, and it's like, how how is this artist still playing? Why is this artist still being allowed to... I don't get it. This guy keeps claiming copyright, and we've been reporting him for this artist, Midnight Pilot, which, sadly, is a pilot. Uh, We've been uh, reporting that, he, you know, he's wanting us to share. And it's not that I don't mind sharing, but that wasn't the agreement. The agreement is I pay you a subscription, and it's safe, and there's no sharing. I've paid you already. I've paid the artist already. So anyway, they sent me like, and then they've been saying, oh, well, this company over here that's disputing the music, uh, we don't even have that music. That's not our music. Like, what are you talking about? If you just watch my live streams, you know that the only music that is being played is coming through the pretzel service. Period. There is no other music source. And like, that's not our music. What are you talking about? They're like, if you want to go after and dispute, uh, TuneCore or any of these other people, you're going to have to take that up with them. I'm like, no, that's your job. And this is your music. So I, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be using them. Uh, and then they're telling me things like, you know, down the road, any one of our artists might just leave and they get to take their catalog of music with them. And then suddenly all the music that you've paid for, now you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to share. Well, that wasn't the agreement. And if that was the agreement up front, I'd been cool with it. That's what we agreed upon, but that's not what the contract is. So they, so what they're doing is they're allowing their musicians to use to be part of this service, but they don't secure that right in perpetuity, perpetuity for themselves and for us as paying subscribers. So it seems, based on what they're saying, that any artist that's currently with them can just pick up and leave. And they take all the music with them. Because in a perfect world, yeah, you do get to keep copyrights. But in a case like this, where you're creating a service like this, you it's supposed to be work for hire. Because there's no other way to do that. You can't, you know, you have to give up your rights. If you're going to create music for Pretzel, you're giving them the rights. That's just the way it is. You either do or you don't. You shouldn't be able to create music for Pretzel and then pick up and leave. And uh, now you get to go out to YouTube and double dip. You got paid from Pretzel, but now you get to go out to YouTube and you get to hit everybody up that's that's got your music. And now uh, just break it in. You know, and I know that some people are out there like, well, that kind of makes sense, right? He's not with them, and now how is he going to get paid? You know, hey, look, that's not the contract. That's just legally not the way, you know, in a in a perfect world, yeah, I mean, and I should should be happy. But, look, when you're making four bucks, that penny matters. I'm no big-time guy here. I would, I, hey, that'd be great. I'd love to be, but I'm just not. Look, that's just not the way it is. Anyway, let's get over here and pick this job. Did we lose sound again? Oh, it's probably because duh, 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 my brain's all over the place. 
Okay, so that is, we need to be at 008, and I think that is it, but let's double check. O zero eight, not zero zero eight. O zero eight. Okay. Yeah, and the wind was pushing from the north, so that's uh, so we should be then taking off this way. Yeah, let's double check. We had shifted. What is Sacramento? So down here it is pushing to the direction. You could type in an airport. What is Sacramento? Okay, S A C. D S M F. There it is. So when the no, uh, when we're just north of that, so if we're coming back over to Metar. There's my mouse, kind of in the middle of that map, when, well, kind of lower, see KSMF, right in the winds pushing from the north. Well, it looks like it's pushing from the south. Right? That's the way I was reading it, that the wind is pushing the direction of the pin. We have flight conditions here. Or only when we get in there. Now it switched us. Oh no, that's where I. Well, no, that's where it put us. <clears throat> well, that would. Okay, we'll just go with it. Usually, it's really good about moving us. So if the wind is going back and forth in this area, then ah, well, it's it's usually not that big of a deal. Welcome back, Captain. It looks like the weather is perfect for flying. Usually. I mean, seriously, weather can make a big difference. Pilot from dispatch. We have more mail packs that need to be delivered. The deadline is tight, but I'm sure you have what it takes. Oh, no, I picked a timed one. Transporter, loading has started. No, that Stand won't by. work. These are usually like 15 minute runs. We can't take it. And now Bush Talk is up. Transporter. Loading is complete. Let's go. Okay. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. So it happens. I wasn't paying that much attention, and I picked one that is a timed. So if you do, unless you're just gonna be Johnny on the spot, as soon as you get it, you're up, you gotta go. You don't have any time to waste to get to your destination. And that's if I was in Colorado Springs and that's all we were doing is short hops across town back and forth. Sure, fine. But on something like this, no, you can't. And if you've made a mistake too, just come down here to the bottom, click the trash can. Oh, and can't do while the en engine is running. That's another.
Do do do. Battle ready. Okay, good. All right, now that the engine has stopped. Pilot, stand by. The cargo is being removed. Okay. So, back up here to jobs. And pull our map back and try to find something else. Um, change this up. See if we get different options. Okay, that job is taking us straight north. Nope. That, that kind of works. What kind of job is it? That's fragile cargo. For 19,000. Do. M45. Yeah, fine. E. Transporter from dispatch. It's a sensitive cargo mission today. When you check the payload in the flight plan, please release the parking brake to start. Aircrew, be advised, today's fragile cargo is being manually handled onto the aircraft at the customer's request. All right, so it says 615 pounds. So we'll, we'll, without opening up the little Sky for Sims thing. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo is on board. You are clear to taxi to the runway and take off. So, um, 615. So what I'm trying to do here is see if, if if that is correct when I open the Sky for Sims thing. Because sometimes I want to see if it's accurate. Because I've been judging my weights on that, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. It's an add-on that you get that you can pay for to go with Neofly. Uh, they might be including it for free now. I don't know. I haven't checked in a while. Okay, so... Fuel. Go to your hangar. And I've got my fuel synced. That's in settings. You don't want to sync your fuel. Come in here and turn and uncheck this. And then you can add your fuel in in the simulator itself. But I currently have them synced. So now uh and now I go back to the hangar, click on fuel, and add some fuel in there. And then um then we go back to the simulator and see if we're we put too much in or we could put some more in. All right, so we're not overweight. We could put some more fuel. All right, just a, just a touch. All right, these will turn red down here. It'll show you if you put too much fuel, it'll show you that you're overweight. This will these will turn red. So then you just got to go back in here and remove. You would come back in here, and then just drag the slider down, and then okay it, and it'll remove fuel. Okay, but so far we're good. Now I wanted to see if that is right with uh, the Sky for Sims tool. So again, it's a tool that you might get for free. You might have to pay for. I don't know. I paid for it at that time. And once the server is started, in the simulator, you click on this icon. Sky for Sims, NG. Right, that brings this up. And a lot of the tools in here do work just fine. You know, flight planning and stuff, but um, there are other things that you can do with this. Uh, maps, airports, flight plans, weather, documents, push trips, notifications, notepad, whiteboard, 
pilot book, descent planner, freelance jobs, which I guess ties into the uh, Neofly. Career news and settings. Okay, so for us, we've already picked a job, so we want to come to Neofly career. And this will uh, show us the current job that we have. Now, this is at odds. See, because in the in this over here, for the job, Oh, now here it says the weight is 1562. Now this might put us over fuel-wise. We might redline now. But over here it says the payload is 1732. So if I start dragging this up to meet the requirements, there's still negative 345 pounds. 53 pounds. Okay, we've done it, and we haven't caused anything to go into the red. So now, according to Sky for Sims, we've met the required payload for this fragile, fragile cargo. I haven't ever tried adding fuel in here from here. Or taking away fuel. Doesn't want you to. Okay, well, not the big deal. Okay, so now that fuel has been added, so they did add it. Okay. Um, but once that's done, I pretty much don't use it. But if you want to quickly take a look at some of these things, there's maps. They do have awful nice maps. I mean, for street street maps, I should probably pop this out in its own little window. Um, actually. I can open the sky for Sims as a on a web browser. Let me get rid of aviationweather.gov. We've already checked that out for the day. And yes. It does work. Okay. Now Yeah, so this is a very nice map when you, um, okay, this one has all the lovely information. So I'll leave that one up and we can check that as we go. <coughs> Moving on. Uh, Bush Talk Radio is active. It shows us there. This also has nice, uh, This is on another screen, so I'm sorry when I look over at the other screen if it if, if I go quiet, I'm not facing the microphone. This will be better. I'll drag it in front of me over to this screen. I have two big screens. I'm partially blind. Well, getting there. That's that's a little bit of hyperbole, but getting old. Uh. Gotta have big screens. Okay. This one also has 
different uh, map options. That one doesn't give us the nice. It doesn't label things. Uh, this one does kind of gives you some information. And not as in depth as, as in depth as the other. Yeah, maybe once you get down, it's gotta be pretty zoomed in. Okay. So we might trigger some of these points along the way. And then as we're traveling back home, so here we'll be down here, so we'll trigger a lot of these coming this way. And then um heading up this way, so there's all these we can try to cover in here. That's probably as far as we'll make it today. And then to decide to shoot up and over all of this, there's not any points of interest even far between. So, oh, we'll see how far we get. Maybe we'll go this way and then start cutting across because this is such a dense area of um, points of interest. And then on our way back, uh, yeah. So, yeah, maybe this route here and then back up. I don't know yet. This is a very large cluster of stuff, though. Then maybe up through here. And it gets pretty clustery again up in here. All right, either way, it's going to be an adventure, always is. And I think that pretty much squares, it gets us squared. Uh, hopefully I don't have to restart. If you sit too long sometimes, doing other things, the simulator freaks out and it just kind of freezes everything up. And you have to go to the main menu again. All right. Uh, I've told them that I'm going to, you know, I'll keep using their stuff for a little bit, but if this is the way it's going to be and they're going to keep eventually, I mean, uh, eventually if if it's a scam or if all of their musical artists end up leaving, uh, then everything that you've ever recorded, all of your streams, every single stream will then every song and, you know, uh, listening to the music, dozens and dozens of tracks play or dozens it means every live stream that you have out there using your music now it's all broken down now it's just not you're losing a uh, a penny you know now you've, it's going to be broke down over like 50 people are going to be claiming their share of one live stream which gets 32 views <laughs> that's a lot of muting and at that point you just delete your stuff so again I'll, I'll 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 keep going with them for a little bit more 
But if if that's the route they're gonna go, then I gotta get out sooner than later. But as an idea, this is the dream one of the dreamiest things I've ever I've ever encountered. If I could have created something like this and launched a service like this, I'll tell you what, we wouldn't be having these problems. You're not going to come in and sign a contract with me, help me develop this, and then walk away with your catalog and, you know, you, no. I definitely wouldn't do to you what they're doing to me at the moment. So, again, we'll see. You, you and I will both know uh, how to feel about using a service like this and what uh, could be potential pitfalls using ser other services like this down the road. And right now, this is not good. But I've loved it. It's, a, it's ideal. This is the most wonderful thing. Uh, I have uh, used to be a DJ and do internet radio. And, uh, I, you know, I just, I'm addicted to music. Right, and nothing, uh, it's the best thing to listen to. Other, You know, I don't want to keep, not that I don't want to keep talking the whole time, but you get what I mean. It's nice having music. And I can't play any of my stuff because it's all commercial radio. I wish I could. Boy, I wish I could play all the music that I have. My collection is pretty darn good. If you've got a request out there, chances are I have it. So built that up over years and years. And uh the way YouTube has got their creative music set up that just you can use one track and that's it for one video, one use only, and you're gonna go broke. You'll be broke in a day. So anyway, this is uh the most amazing service. I love it. And I hope it all works out. But, man, I can't imagine the, the tragedy of having to delete, just end up deleting all of my live streams and uh, all of my flights because of that. That's kind of put me in a funk mood. Let's find that funk. Grab my volume controls over here. Running by Silvano Dementi. Sorry, getting up to such a late start and getting all that uh, stuff done. Not getting all that stuff done before getting the stream going. Kind of thought. Transporter, good flight and land softly. People would want to actually see me setting up and using a uh, push talk and me tars and. Sky Vector. Oh, you know what I need to do is because of the uh, ads that have been popping up. I had to enable certain um, antiviruses and defenders, and I forgot to disable them for this.
So I need to get these turned off or you might be experiencing some choppiness. I got the chat window in the proper place and uh, let's see where we're at yeah we're pretty much right there Sacramento ahead Reno, he's a day, he's a day, he's a day, yo. College City, Arbuckle, then again. Yeah, I like this one a lot. So I've got family that lives around here. All right, let's change our heading a little bit. about that double rainbow yesterday spectacular so in entertainment news today actually it was big news yesterday but I usually don't talk about anything like that but uh, I used to be a big comic book fan growing up and I like drawing that kind of stuff And uh, very into the Marvel content. Was a Marvel kid growing up. Not so much DC. Occasionally a Batman here and there, Superman. But I was a Marvel kid. 
So I'm a geeky Marvel adult. And uh, yesterday in entertainment news, you probably already heard that they're talking about Pedro Pascal being cast as Reed Richards. I really like Pedro Pascal. I am really opposed to the idea of him playing Reed Richards. I thought they had a better choice with uh, his name, John Krasinski. To me, he's a lot closer. He's the, the closest one to a Reed Richards, I think, so far. I mean, if we could go back in time and find somebody that looks exactly like the professor did from Gilligan's Island, is not the professor Reed Richards that face, that, that, that kind of face. 1950 scientist based. Pedro Pascal, I love the guy. That's not, that's not it. You know, and I'm sure he's a, a great talent, but. You know, is the his is the Latin gonna come through? Anyway, I could be wrong, you know, right? But they've had so many bungles with Fantastic Four. I really didn't enjoy any of the earlier Fantastic Four content. And then there was the one that was going to be made in the '80s that they canned. The Gorman, uh, I think that was his name. His. Uh, Vanessa Kirby, I have no problem with her as Sue Richards. The other two guys that they're casting for Johnny and uh, Thing, I really don't know them. They're an unknown quantity to me. They look the part, but, you know, makeup and da 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 da. Who knows? I don't know. I'd, I'd have, with the, the guy playing the Thing, it's like I really just need to hear it. More of a, you know. How does he sound? Does he got that right? In, uh, Yancey Street, New York voice. Yeah, specific, right? I mean, every borough in New York at that time really kind of had. Still, they've got their own kind of unique accents. So, uh, you know. A big part of the thing is he's always talking about being part of the Yancey Street borough guys. Something like that. Memory serves. Wick, 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 wick. So how do you feel about that? Just give it a chance because I've actually supported guys like Daniel Radcliffe, right? The guy that played Harry Potter, the kid. He's like, hey, I would like to play Wolverine one of these days. And I'm like, no, really? Really? After Hugh Jackman? Boy, wasn't he a godsend? Um, But then again, I'm like, you know, with him, well, maybe why not? I, It, it might work. You know, is he willing to... And with, with special effects and filters, they can make anybody look buff now and massive. Strange. Hollywood is an amazing place now. I hear in most cases, you don't even have to change out of your street clothes. You just walk in and do your crap, and they just CGI everything on top of you. That's insane. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm in the wrong. I don't know. Maybe the same thing with Pedro Pascal. Maybe you, yeah. Maybe he'll be just fine, and I'm just being silly for wanting somebody that just seems to be born for the role. The people that were that did the casting for the Marvel Daredevil production, I think that's probably some of the best casting I've ever seen. I'm like, how in the hell are they ever going to find somebody that's Foggy Nelson? I mean, he's, you know, come on, really? They're never going to be able to find that guy. And who would have ever thought Vincent D'Onofrio was the kingpin? Holy moly. Another bit of amazing casting was 
to punish her. Unbelievable. In my opinion, I mean, that's... He was born to play the Punisher. That's my two cents on those two shows. And uh, when they started messing with Fantastic Four, I'm like, would you please just bring in the people who did the casting for that stuff? Because they were, I mean, they did an amazing job. They've been throwing around so many different people that have tried out for Fantastic Four. And it's just every time they throw one up, Adam Driver is going to be Reed Richards. Really? Margot Robbie. Oh, now you just want to be pop. You just want the popular ones. Yeah, sure, fine. She'd be okay as Sue, but you know she's got other commitments and da 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 da. I like Vanessa Kirby. I think she's very, very. Uh, she's an incredible actress. I saw her for the first time in The Crown. Holy moly! Wow. And just beautiful too. But Reed, yeah. I really would love, want somebody who's just... Looks, again, the 1950s scientist. I didn't think, again, I didn't appreciate the casting on the last Fantastic Four. Attempts. I didn't appreciate the content of them at all. I really wanted classic Fantastic Four. I wanted uh, them to go back in time and start it like a period piece like they did with with uh, Captain America. Because that's where they belong. And then it allows you to tackle the adventures that the Fantastic Four, Four first went on. And not just Doctor Doom. Which I hope they get right. But, you know, some of the earlier Marvel monsters and their encounters, the Mole Men and everything that they messed with early on, give Marvel a chance to, you know, really explore the, the masterwork content. And then if you need to do it through whatever gonna happen sooner or later with the Loki stuff and everything else you have a way to bring them into the future deal with Galactus and yada 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 all right we're heading adjustment here let's do another 20 30 degrees That was Clipper by Re Clipper Remastered. So long, so good. Remain uh, on your screen. It's at the top. On my screen, it's um. Another small. Do you like the uh, music info and album art up in the corner, up at the top? Do you like it or does it bother you in any way? Would you rather have it or not have it? Me, it's when doing internet radio, it's kind of a must. You want to be able to have people to know what they're listening to. It's Sacramento, it's cloud covered. Got to open the separator. We took off. We're gonna go down low, so we'll put it back on.
picked up speed fast. Better be careful. Don't want to share a wing off. Nice tush. Michael Allen Raphael. Uh, he's one of the guys that has popped up as copyrighted so far. So I don't know if I want to play his stuff or not. You know what? I don't. Just because I know I've had problems with his music before. See? Why isn't his music pulled? Why is his music being allowed to play? Up here, you see YouTube Safe is on. Well, I'm surprised the Sacramento, the Sacramento International Airport is located in Sacramento, 10.5 miles northwest of downtown Sacramento in Sacramento County, California, it's something bigger. United States and covers 6,000 acres. It serves the Sacramento metropolitan area and it is run by the Sacramento County Airport System. The airport is the main gateway to the California State Capitol. The airport is also a gateway to some attractions and adventures in Northern and Central California such as Heavenly Mountain Resort, Lake Tahoe, Yosemite National Park, Old Sacramento State Historic Park History of Gold Rush, Underground Tunnels, Floods, and Fire, etc., Wine Country, Yolo Bypass Wildlife Area, Kosumnes River Preserve, Horva Cave, Sutter's Mill and Marshall Gold, Discovery State Historic Park and Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta. Something I would like to point out, and you can usually find it near most major airports. I love how there's a seemingly like a golf course right at the airport. Right, and everybody's like, uh, I was just listening to the latest developer talking. Like people want all these things in the in the world now that it's a, kind of a world simulator too, and it's just you know we need a new architecture for stuff like that if we're gonna allow it and one of the things we've talked about is you know we love flying around but we would like to have ground activities or things to do if we're not flying right so it becomes like an MMO but golfing Microsoft golf always been part of Microsoft so requesting that they bring Microsoft bring back golf but more importantly, incorporate it as an add-on and an, as an expansion, DLC if you will, to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So that once you land at an airport and you're using the uh, Unicom service or whatever, you know how we pull up nearest airports? The nearest golf course. And then you can multiplay and or play golf on your own or multiplay with uh, other pilots get around in get back up in the air you know get some walking done anything is possible in this future that we're heading into computing power is going to keep getting well provided we don't blow each other up here real soon um more and more powerful and there is no such thing as it's not possible at this point. It can be done. You put nest games with inside of games with inside of games. Modular MMO framework uh, uh, infrastructures such as this seemingly uh, Seemingly allow it. Don't any problems with this person here. Fight or flight. Stuart Moore. It's certainly interesting down there. 
Look at all that. That's weird. We want to be different. We want our neighborhoods to be different, man. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's alien speak. Eat at Joe's. Alien on the ground, written in the ground to cease from the air. Welcome to Sacramento, alien. So I spent, I've spent a lot of time here, but as a guest, so you know. So I didn't memorize it and to know where everything is at. I know I have an uncle that worked on the big railroad systems over here. Works in railroad. And I'm sure I've been across all of these bridges once or twice. And I've been downtown. Even when I stayed here for several months, I was mostly in a barn, not kidding, in a barn, doing my Star Trek Golden broadcasting. Golden Boy Center is an indoor arena oh. located in downtown Sacramento, California, United States. It sits partially on the site of the former downtown Plaza shopping center. The publicly owned arena is part of a business and entertainment district called Downtown Commons, which includes a $250 million 16-story mixed-use tower. The arena, which replaced Sleep Train Arena as the home of the Sacramento Kings of the National Basketball Association, hosts concerts, conventions and other sporting and entertainment events. Capacity is expandable to about 19,000 to accommodate concert audiences. Getting some micro stutters. Just too much stuff running, man. Charles C. Hughes Stadium is an outdoor stadium in the western United States, located at Sacramento City College in Sacramento, California. First opened 92 years ago in 1928, it was named for Charles C. Hughes in 1944, mm. the first superintendent of the Sacramento City Unified School District. In 2012, the stadium underwent a major overhaul, installing an artificial turf field surface, a new track surface, and a major refurbishment of the facilities documented in this video. Its present seating capacity is 20,311. I am really loath to turn anything down at the moment because I just am. I don't like it. Um. But it seems I must at the moment. Because we're just getting too many micro stutters. Hornet Stadium is a 21,195 seat college football no and track stadium in the western United States on the campus of California State University, Sacramento in Sacramento, California. It is the home field of the Sacramento State Hornets of the Big Sky Conference. Opened 50 years ago on September 20, 1969, it has also been the home stadium of the Sacramento Surge of the WAF, the Sacramento Gold Miners of the Canadian Football League and the Sacramento Mountain Lions of the United Football League. It hosted the U.S. Olympic Trials for track and field in 2000 and 2004. Could be just because it's so big, you know what I mean? It's so expansive that when you're doing an external view, yeah, it's just not going to be happy. So with that, please like and subscribe. Um, as we go into next year, I'll be uh, looking for now a higher end computer. This has all been done with mid-range, low to mid-range stuff. And uh, people ask that all the time. Can you run it? You're 
It looks awful awesome on your computer. You must have a high end. No, not at all. Not at all. This is all m terribly mid range stuff. Okay. At least get stabilized again. Um, we do need to be heading west. I'm sorry. I don't know. My bad. We must be heading east. All right. Let's go back and find out what was the name of the airport and get ourselves planned. The airport is M45. Um, you can use it, but I mean, you can, I could do, I, I know how to do this all with the knobs and operate this thing by knobs, but they've included this neat, neat little feature in here. Right? This little icon right here. And this allows you to, uh, where you're not holding my altitude. Oh, oh it is. Oh, well, I don't have anything in. All right, so they have this in here, and and I could use all these knobs and do it that way, but they have this icon. You click that, it allows you to use your keyboard. What was it, M45? Is correct. We just switched over to nav now. Now they're away from the city. Yeah, much more stable. Now they're saying beat it up. They're saying heat it up. Like, what are you saying? Power ending. Hugo's Walk, Nicholas Christo, Baudino and Giles, Funky. Cardoni, again I have to strain over to a different screen, we can bring that over here, bring this down.
I should be taking full advantage of the stream markers and I haven't been. I'm an idiot. They're also allowing us to control our own ad placements now, which I really don't bother with. I've just set it to every 18 minutes. That used to be the attention span of people. That's why commercials in old in the 80s, 70s, 80s TV shows, usually one commercial break every 20 minutes because they said that was the average uh, attention span back then. They said it's down to seven minutes. Seven minutes these days of attention span, so. Yeah, now they recommend a commercial every seven minutes. I'm old school. Sounds like old Motown. that one absolutely loved that one can you humanize yourself won't you humanize yourself can you humanize yourself cause you humanize yourself tell me what to do I ain't got a clue I wanna be as human as you Can you humanize yourself? Won't you humanize yourself? 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 Can you humanize yourself? Won't you human
Nice. Speaking of nice, that is some lovely terrain. Rich and uh, the rich and few get to afford living out in places like this. I guess it depends on what you're doing. Now the wind is blowing 13 knots from the southeast. Oh, I want to apologize for yesterday. I said I wanted to get into doing some Baldur's Gate yesterday after all of this. And um, 
this one um, particular website. I guess when I was trying to pull up a manual for flight simulator at some point, put some nasty stuff on my computer and it was just opening up ads everywhere. So, uh, I just spent most of the afternoon yesterday trying to track down and block the IPs that are virtualonlinemanuals.com and then going through Windows settings to try to I think I'm sure all the blockers are on and so they're starting to drive drive me mad, so I'm going to deal with all that. Probably should go up some more. I checked Sky Vector and I think the highest point along the route was like 9-3. But my luck. I'd be right where we're headed. I have to do this. Wait, oh, come on. It's getting dangerous. Well, they've got their priorities in order. Big turmoil on the uh, the Bay Bridge, which we were at yesterday. Big turmoil, turmoil on the Bay Bridge today.
I'm afraid to look over the dash. We're getting there. Cracking me up. Just realize that every night I'm getting high and dancing. Could you get your feet back on the ground? Just realize that every night I'm getting high and dancing. Could you get your feet back on the ground? Just realize that every night I'm getting high and dancing. 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 Nice. 23 minutes after the hour. 11.23 here in the Midwest. Listening to the Funk Channel today on Pretzel. It's all li live weather, live time in the simulator. So that's what's going on weather-wise out here. In uh, this part of California, It'll only be a little after in what nine, maybe ten, you know, like two hours ahead. Nine twenty-four. Oh man, I hope we can clear this. Come on, nah, I'm worried. Let's keep going up more. Gotta be Chris. Hello, Chris. Yep. Alrighty. Bye bye. Man, is our destination way up here? It says it's only 15 miles ahead.
I really should have paid attention to the charts a little bit better. Got us up to a higher altitude before struggling as we approached. Making myself all a beard. And of course, there's going to be a big cloud bank right up ahead. <laughs> we, might, we might have to cancel this landing. That's probably it right there, Alpine County. Expect to see some Rikula girl out there blowing a horn. Hope Valley is a broad mountain valley in Alpine County, California, located on the eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada to the northeast of Carson Pass and south of Lake Tahoe. The valley served as a major thoroughfare for the passage of settlers and emigrants to and from California during the Gold Rush era. Sitting at an elevation of just above 7,000 feet and framed by peaks reaching over 10,000 feet high, Hope Valley is known for its wide vistas, fly fishing, fall colors, and winter activities. Situated on the eastern slope of the Sierra Nevada mountains, the upper end of the valley begins about four miles northeast of Carson Pass, near the confluence where Red Lake Creek flows into the West Fork of the Carson River. From this point, the valley carries the river north for several miles before making a wide turn to the east. About a mile and a half east of the turn, just before reaching Sorensen's Resort, the wide valley abruptly narrows, and a steep V-shaped canyon carries the river further downstream toward the Nevada deserts. All right, we are here. Yep, this is it. I wonder if they have um, automated or automated. I wonder if they have glasses for pilots now. You know, like a uh, overlays, like HUD glasses. So they're able to visualize things like this. Somebody told me that they have HUD systems now that will show them the glide. You know, the, the pattern entry and the glide path, and, and I'm wondering if they have, yeah, something like glasses, like a monocle that you could wear, that will display this kind of information to you. It's so handy. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, if you get the airport information, you'll know if it's left hand or right hand, and... You get a feel for the distances, but it's just so nice. In this case, yeah, the entry is halfway into the mountain, though. So if you couldn't see and you were shooting for the middle of the thing, yeah. <laughs>
Nay, yeah, I think this would be a very scary approach at night. You'll have to have studied the charts thoroughly. Thoroughly, thoroughly. Like the Aspen approach. You better know every square inch. I've done a couple of night flights. I, I tried for a long time getting a whole bunch of night hours. And I tried flying in and out of, um, I think it was near Alamosa or Gunnison in Colorado. And then making my way back to Colorado Springs. And yeah, it's all in valleys. It was ridiculously frightening simulators frozen there for a moment very frightening trying to navigate around mountains in the dark but again if, you know as long as you have good charts and you're following your charts and you know how to read them well and you know it's still terrifying but you know, you have no choice. The confidence and trusting all that information, all your information. Knowing how to use all of your instruments properly. Twenty degree flaps. What a gorgeous place. Full flaps. It reminds me of 70s kung fu movie music. Films based around San Francisco. they could have even used this for something like Dallas wind has changed direction now it's coming more from the uh, east
I don't ask it paid. Yeah, let's well just leave it open. Turn off new fly, it's still there. Where are we getting paid? Transport from there dispatch. We go. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. Dispatch. Cargo unloaded and checked. It is always a pleasure to work with you. All right. Now let me. Ready for engine start. Increase the miles here and try to find something going west. Great West. The Round Mountain. That's a runway? It is a runway. NV83. Let's see if that's in our computer. NV83, Round Mountain. Yep, that is right. Cargo is being transferred. Only it was.
All right, so we're not overweight. We can get out of here. No, but tough climb. Here, probably going to want to go. Well, pretty straight and level. So probably taking up that direction and gaining altitude. All right, so let's check out Sky Vector. Clear all this out. Forty-five to NV eight three. All right, so eleven thousand two hundred eleven seven. Our destination is actually twelve one. Eight nine doesn't tell me the elevation in here. That's eleven three. That's as low as seven six. An advisory service area. I'm not sure what the red and blue is. Usually this is like blues for military. least 11 7 work our way up to 12 1 12 5 somewhere in there and it drops down in here at 8 6 Run them over.
See this? Support it. Well, you can't. It's pop up. Supported by View Online Manuals. Yeah, look out for this hill, right? So I probably should have taken off from the other direction because the wind was kind of blowing more from south, southeast. I think we'll be all right, but I was going to say it does matter, though. I mean, I've come in with some tailwinds and landed wrong with with the wind instead of against the wind, and it, I've had some horrible landings. make a couple adjustments here. Sooner than later. Pilot from dispatch. Fly safe. Uh -huh. 
right? Just keep going this way for a while until we get more altitude. Hmm, I like I'm liking this music. I'm like a madman. I'm loving it. Starting to lose some speed, though. Come on.
I'm gonna go ahead and actually go turn a little bit. Turn south. What are you doing? Get over here. Let's turn in the direction of the wind. See if we can finish our climb. Now we're turned directly into the wind. All right, thirteen five. can't see based on everything that the charts are telling us i mean we have synthetic vision in here of course but according to those charts there wasn't anything above what 11 11 i thought it was 11 9 according to this nothing's in our way I would not have wanted to have been an aviator prior to all of this amazing technology and all the great charts. <laughs> no, sir. That's when you're only flying on absolutely clear days, and if there's any clouds in the sky, it's just get down. You can't see. You, you No. You gotta be super careful about every bit of weather and wind directions and... Brave, brave, brave people. tell you about yesterday I told you yesterday I was making sushi ha uh ha -huh. I screwed up in a bad way I put too much really wasn't thinking as usual put too much of the sushi vinegar into the rice and it got too wet it absorbed too much and the rice got too wet and so when you put it down you do it traditional with the you know the uh, seaweed on the outside well it doesn't matter if it's on the inside or not the rice is too wet it just turns the seaweed to rubber
It just makes it the whole sushi roll a gooey mess. I was very disappointed last night. And we should be good elevation wise all the way to the destination, which was 12 1. We'll save a little bit of fuel, probably. Oh, we're doing all right, right in there. You don't want to pull back too much. Maybe just a touch. It's at the edge. Altimeter 3003. So that wind is really helping us out. I mean, it's really pushing us fast. I'm able to pull back on the throttle. Trying to just get us about, you know, that 120 mark right above flap speed into a cruise right in there. Which will allow us to conserve a little bit more fuel. Don't want to go down any more than that, so we're. Just a touch above half throttle. Try to keep it on an upward as opposed to a downward. Yeah, about half throttle then. Keeps going up, we're in good shape. Okay. This music's making me feel young again. Disco era it was not that in the disco. I mean, you know, it was the time though. Definitely more of an eighties kid. But I can totally see this playing. The transition of the from the seventies and the eighties funk and the disco. Wearing a shirt with a collar out to each shoulder. Man, if you watch Saturday Night Fever, somebody brought this up in college and it's always stuck with me and I agree with it. They said, come on, let's watch Saturday Night Fever. And I said, why? They said, because it's a completely different world than where we live now. 
And when you look at the way we dressed, everything about it, it's a it's a foreign, it's an alien world. I'm like, all right, yeah, all right, so let's do it. So we put Saturday Night Fever on, and sure enough, in by 1990, 1990. Watching Saturday Night Fever felt like watching in it science fiction. An entirely different world. Watch things like The Warriors. Wow. That's why some kind of some remakes of things that are done in the past to be politically correct. Here's an example. Probably shouldn't even go there, but let me go there. Shang-Chi, right? Marvel's Master of Kung Fu. They used to dress a specific way. They've always dressed a specific way. The Chinese have always had their unique type of clothing. And the Master of Kung Fu during the 70s was no exception. You know, so... Whenever they create, like, a Chinese title... It's like they're afraid to go back and show people wearing the, the Chinese clothing from 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, or, you know, it's all got to be completely new, upscaled. Strange. The way people dressed in like the 1950s is seems closer like when like like that if you were to watch stuff from the 1950s it doesn't feel like an alien world it feels like kind of very similar but yeah 1970s 70s Shh. some of that 80s too some of the 80s feels very very foreign the big hair and from the weather, out from the clouds. Clear skies mostly ahead. Mostly. Yeah, and we got that wind. It's kind of more to the side, but it's still getting kind of a tailwind. Kinda. This sounds like I heard it through the grapevine. Into squeeze. Hey, I see a, a number of people have stopped in or at least tuned in for a minute or two. And I want to thank every one of you. Thank you, all of you, for taking even a minute out of your day. Thank you. Everybody who's, who's checked in so far. Uh, it looks like the average viewer like watched like 40 seconds. Like, oh yeah, that guy again? Oh yeah, yeah. Forgot why I don't watch him. Uh, but people are stopping in. I usually get this, you know, the same amount of people stopping in every day. And so again, thank you. Just taking a minute out of your day. Tuning in. Uh, I will say thank you to Pretzel until I can't say thank you to Pretzel anymore. So far, a lot of this stuff hasn't caused any copyright problems, and I hope that continues. I would really like to keep using the service and heap praises upon them for creating the best thing ever. Live stream safe music for YouTube. And I just, again, got to keep my fingers and toes crossed that... 
it doesn't turn into some giant scam in the end when they close their doors and now we got to go back through every live stream and strip out every piece of music or you're going to end up sharing it so now you get like one 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 millionth of a percent for your monetization and i guess you know I've, I've, I've said in the past, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could play music and it could spread out all the monetization? You're going to... People are definitely that watched a lot of my stuff are going to say, you, you said it. You said it over and over again. Wouldn't it be great if we could do that? Split monetization over many people so you could play as much music as you want? Yeah, I have. But that's not the contract as it is at the moment. That's not the expectation. The expectation is I pay a subscription... And it's YouTube safe music. And they're supposed to guarantee that it remains YouTube safe music. Well, but now they're starting to say, well, you know, some of our artists might leave. So what? They can create new music. The stuff that they created for you should all be in perpetuity YouTube safe. Then they'll say things like, well, it was meant for a live stream. Once your live stream is done, it's now a video. Well. And therefore, you should uh, share everything. Mm, I don't think so. You don't know how to feel about it. How, do, how would you feel about it? How do you feel about it? I don't think that'd be right. Again, contractually, there's an expectation here. Because after the live stream's over, then what are you supposed to delete your live stream? People can't replay it or watch it. Or you got to go back and yeah. Mute all the audio. They've got a beta feature that just tries to strip the music out only, but man, how many tracks have we already heard? if they do it and they remain steadfast and they say hey anything that you use that's YouTube safe in perpetuity it's safe and then they'll have confident subscribers and we can say yeah you pretzel is the right way to go song traders done it right and this is absolutely the best way for you to um, get really good musical content into your live streams which then become videos So in the long run, I think it behooves them to make sure that it's always cleared so that they can have lots more subscribers as opposed to us all getting angry and having to keep filing copyright disputes. Which at that point, when uh, YouTube, at their discretion, can say, you just filed too many copyright disputes. We're just going to demonetize you. You're more trouble than you're worth. And that's not good either. So yeah, as song trader, I would make it absolutely clear. My any artist signing with me, hey, look, this is this is the deal here. You don't love it and you're not attached to it. Don't give us anything you absolutely love that you're gonna put in your personal collection. Don't do it. This is all creating music for that is going to be just basically uh, always safe.
a nice body of water. I'm surprised they haven't totally done something. Major development around there. There's something growing up there. Somebody on Twitter yesterday was saying what I said in an earlier live stream this week that remembering back to a time before there was Microsoft Flight Simulator and how we cried and cried. You know, and how difficult it was to get photogrammetry into your sims or pay through the nose or... a beautiful thing Microsoft Flight Simulator is and I haven't checked out the latest X-Plane I'm sure it's fantastic I've loved X-Plane too but it's like being a Marvel person I'm I don't know what it is I, I I'm a Microsoft person too in a lot of ways and after what Asobo has delivered unto us you know I just I feel blessed. I, they they deserve they deserve it. They deserve our loyalty and 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 endless endless praise for w what they have delivered wasn't even what most of us we, we didn't didn't even ask for all this amazing stuff that it includes. There's a lot of things that we just never even thought to ask for that they put in. Maybe somebody did, but wow. But just, again, yeah, on a mid-range PC, the level of detail that we're experiencing right now. So good. Take a moment to glance over at... Uh, We're at here. Oh, there we are over here. Giant army depot on the south side of that lake. Alkali flat. Paradise range, Shoshone range. Somebody on Twitter pointed out today that uh, the launch of MTV is closer to what, Pearl Harbor. The launch of MTV is closer to Pearl Harbor than it is to us today. You understand what I mean? It is closer, yeah, in time. 
and we are to it at the moment. Heiko Watiti says his Star Wars movie is gonna piss people off. It will be dramatic pause. The uh, Heiko Watiti film. You know, and he did that. He 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 managed, and I you know, I, I hope that wasn't intent when he made Thor: Love and Thunder. But yeah, he does add a little bit. I found a nice balance to his stuff, but it got a little too silly in some spots. I didn't really like the way they did Zeus. Just some things were a little bit too comedic. But, you know, that that's his, his style. So. Well, it seems like they've cleaned up the problem, or they're cleaning up the problem on the Bay Bridge.
Now they're saying Jake Gyllenhaal reportedly tried out for the role of Reed Richards and declined it. Oh my goodness. I think the John Krasinski fellow that they picked was, he's great. I really like him a lot. I really like him as Jack Ryan. I didn't know anything about him. They're like, they're thinking about this guy named Krasinski or Reed Richards. And I'm like, ah, all right. He kind of looks the role. Ears stick out a bit, but hey, you know, hey. All right, let me go check out his, you know, some of his stuff. Oh, I, I remember him in that now. I didn't know who he was then. Oh, and then I started watching Jack Ryan stuff. Oh, man. He's fantastic. Literally. Yeah. I totally can see him as more of a Reed Richards than any of the other choices. And they've already had him as Reed Richards, you know, for a small cameo and the madness of the multiverse stuff. Multiverse of madness or whatever it was. And, uh, yeah, let him be able to do it again. Let him continue on. Unless, for whatever reason, he has said no, but I... I never played the Assassin's Creed games, but now they're saying uh, Assassin's Creed Nexus is going to be available in VR on MetaQuest. What a trip. Scrolling through uh, Twitter chain and any headlines. It's an ad for a nice rust remover. Pretty impressive. Ninety six percent of climate data is fraudulent. Well, folks, I uh
I would probably say yeah. We're here. Quicker than I was expecting. Wind is still blowing from the wind is blowing from two oh six. We're only seventeen then. that there. Yeah, let's just turn off the pilot and come down. Kind of free falling, putting in some trim, kind of getting surprisingly pushed that way. A little too much trim there. It feels more right, the wind pushing us.
All right, just kind of um, drifting down. So you can, when, you know, given a situation like this, go to the entry point, you can fly around it. Um, so there's lessons on how to approach the traffic pattern based on which direction you're coming from. But one of the procedures you can do is you can cross the airport at the midpoint and fly straight over it and intercept the landing path at the midpoint on the other side but you don't always have to you know come in you can like right now I mean I could approach it and then do a right hand turn and then a left hand turn and then a left hand turn or again just keep going forward and intercept it there This is another place. Again, these ridges are all running north south, so we'll always uh we can go north or south on takeoff and you know build up our altitude before making our turns. We'll probably want to take off going that way this time more into the wind Hadley, Nevada is an unincorporated community and company town in Nye County, Nevada, located off of State Route 376, approximately 56 miles by road north of Tonopah, and approximately 66 miles by road south of Austin. The nearest town is Carvers, 5 miles to the north. As mining properties at Round Mountain changed hands in the 1970s and 1980s the emphasis on the methodology of the recovery of ore swung from the adits and stopes of underground mining to the open pit. In 1987 began expanding their operations and the need to open up additional housing for the influx of employees became apparent. Legal questions regarding the land at the Round Mountain town site precluded expansion at that location, the company began exploring Oops. other feasible options and within the next two years had acquired the ICT Ranch in Smoky Valley from one Invard Christiansen and began platting and construction at the new town site. While the original town of Round Mountain remains near the current mining operation, the construction of Hadley served, in essence, as a relocation of the former community. As such, and with the new town existing as of, by, and for Round Mountain Gold, the surrounding areas, including both towns, are often generically referred to as Round Mountain. In Hadley there is an elementary school, a high school, a library, a swimming pool, a golf course and a football field.
Huh. So all this gold mining? Round Mountain is an unincorporated town in Nye County, Nevada, United States. The population of Round Mountain as of 2014 is 1,868. The town's zip code is 89,045. Round Mountain is best known for the Round Mountain Gold Mine, a large open pit heap leach gold mine owned by Kinross Gold Corporation. The first gold production from the Round Mountain District was in 1906, and by 2006 the mine had produced over 10 million ounces of gold, worth about 9.5 billion US dollars at 2009 prices. All reserves and resources total about 1.8 million ounces of gold as of the end of 2007. The gold occurs on the rim of an ancient collapsed caldera and is mainly fine-grained, with visible gold occurring in structural intersections. While the original town of Round Mountain remains near the current mining operation, the construction of Hadley served, in essence, as a relocation of the former community. As such, and with the new town existing as of, by, and for Round Mountain Gold, the surrounding areas, including both towns, are often generically referred to as Round Mountain. That's a lot of gold. All right. I have the music down so low or off. I don't know if you can hear it. I can barely hear it. Sorry about that. Shut 
Sometimes you grease them, sometimes you don't. Breaks, man. Yeah, time for a new brake button. It sticks sometimes. It doesn't, uh, I'm used to doing quick releases, tapping on it. Now it just wants to stick. built up so much momentum want to stop all right let's get paid usually in the past just doing that those that right there, just turning those switches off without turning everything off will eventually slow down enough. Transporter, cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Where it kicks in. Okay. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo was picked up by the customer. Your mission is completed. Alrighty. Here we get paid. Let's get out of here. Well, trying to find one that's going straight west. That one's going west. Twenty one thousand cargo job. And let's find out if it's in our database here. U fifty two. Sure enough. All right, we'll take it. Transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a cargo mission. The ground crew is waiting for you in the parking to load the crates. Pilot from dispatch. The cargo door is open and the cargo is being transferred. Okay, pilot, that's the last of the crate secured and the cargo door is closed and latched. You are cleared to taxi. Okay. Mm. Got fuel.
All right. Easy now. Okay, pilot, steady away. See you again soon. Have that on. Take off. Derp -a -derp -a.
2999. Turning more into the wind. One oh nine. Taking off from someplace and heading to someplace else. From NV83 to U52. That's this next leg here. 103 p.m. in the afternoon here in the Midwest. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Probably good to set things to nav now. Turn off heading. Reestablish in the GPS. Why we have to do this, I don't know. It's already established, but it's the way it is. Probably open the sky vector again and check the route. I don't see anything over 11.6. We're clear in the clear now. At this height, yeah.
Hello, Chris. Hello, I'm at lunch. Don't worry. Big leftovers. I, ooh, I wouldn't have. Yuck. Yeah. Okay. Have a great lunch. Goodbye. I don't want to get too PDA-ish over the air. I don't know why. I shouldn't really care, but... Good shape. Rush Sir Funk a lot. Nice.
nice. All right, still heading back home. And I think that is as high as the uh, terrain gets. Going forward. There's just that little patch out there. There's like three or four bands of mountain ranges that stretch north to south. Let me grab the uh, bush talk radio and you can see. See how these ranges, one, two, three, four, it's like a bear claw or claws. Then we have this open spot and then there's another band here. Then a valley and then another band. A lot close together. Bridge? What the heck is that? We got like creates a shadow. Oh, is that an airplane that flew over? And that's its really. Dark of a shadow. Like it has substance. I need a coffee refill. And we'll play this out. Talk about customizing this thing. Nice drink stand back here. Coffee and snacks and everything else. Just hang out here a minute. Be right back.
Ah, that hits the spot. They're saying, if you really want to learn how to fly and you become a real pilot, you're going to have to give up coffee. What? Yeah, makes you go to the bathroom too often. Well, I've got a bottle. Isn't that what the pizza tube is for? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Why they don't have those built into planes? You know, like you reach up and you pull down the oxygen. You've got this thing that fits over your mouth and you can have your oxygen or you get a little portable one. You're telling me there's no there's no tube. You're telling me there's no tube accessory that you can get for your plane? <laughs> you know? Maybe sits right by this thing. Just a little, uh, you know. Something that sits right here. I'm gonna take you, baby. You know, I'm emergency back. uses. Don't get scared about this. A little tube that comes up. <laughs> a little tube that comes up from the seat. All about you and me. That ain't nobody I mean, I'll just, you know. Put in a little portable one back there. Yeah, there should absolutely be something built like that for planes. That's what I thought of when they when I first heard the term pito. It's gotta be a tube that your pee that goes down towards your toe outside the plane It's like that map that they used is based on the satellite kind of image that we have. Seem like we're seeing kind of like a jet stream. What do they call that? I can't think of the term right at the moment. The airline exhausts. On trails. Whatever. It's like that's what those are down there. Those markings. I think we're done with this channel now. Again, I wish they just had a soft rock, soft rock channel. the lounge that's too fast so oh, just lounge that's that's too fast for a lounge Sounds Christmassy. Fast.
Yeah, we are running a little bit long today. Should have probably ended it earlier at that last leg, but hey. Feeling pretty good today. We're doing all right.
Yeah, that's a little bit nicer. Not exactly soft rock, but I don't mind. Chill channel. A lot of open spaces out here.
Right. I'm halfway there. Bum, 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 bum.
Very, very chill. Almost too chill. Amazing how things can change so quickly from one region to the next. You know, trees, abundance, and then you just 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 over a couple of hills, everything get gets arid again. I thought it was my eyes trying to playing tricks on me. There's like a gash there. It looks like it. They widened the road, or there's something going on there. Loki's over. There's nothing to really watch tonight. I'm trying to think of what's out there. Usually Thursday nights, like Loki night, or that you know on Prime. Sometimes they have those shows on Thursdays. And uh, yeah, really nothing for tonight. So yeah, maybe tonight's the night. Get back to Baldur's Gate. Banner Lord was getting pretty good too, but I guess my audio was all jacked up on those, so I felt bad about that. I don't remember how to play that one too. Banner Lord is was pretty impressive, and things were getting good. I think I had just got married. Our clan was doing excellent. We had acquired a bunch of territory without even having gone to war. And according to the rules of the game, if you acquire territory and you're not a kingdom, nobody will go, they won't go to war with you, the other major factions, because you acquired it. Let's say, for example, uh, one kingdom owns a castle and another king comes in, kingdom comes in and takes it. All right. Well, if you're not a kingdom, and you manage to, before the other kingdom can reclaim their kingdom, go knock out that faction. Oh, it's also got to be a non, a non-empire faction. So, the game's got like let's say eight or nine or ten main factions that are that are established as major empire factions, and then there's a whole bunch of clans running around that aren't kingdoms. They're just clans, clan McConnor, clan McGregor, whatever. So if some upstart clan gets to a point where they become strong enough, they might take one of the major empire's castles. 
And if you can get in there and knock that clan out before the that particular empire takes their territory back, then you get to keep it. And none of the, well, I don't know, so far, none of the other empires have declared war on me or tried to reacquire their territories. And I've been doing really good at, like, upkeeping, you know, and maintaining everything. So that's where I was in it. And then again, we had just gotten married. Character, we had just got him married off. And, um... Yeah, and so that's where the, we were there. I need to see if I still have that thing even loaded. I was moving games around. See if it's still available. I may have saved my game to the cloud, which probably it should still be there. Let me open up Steam real quick. Pardon me if there's any jitters in the stream. Banner Lord, where are you? Mountain Blade Banner Lord. No, I had uninstalled it. Do, 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 do. All right, well, I know that I will have to reinstall it. But again, I think I backed up the game to the cloud. Forty eight miles. So very profitable day. And our third our third hop for the day. Hasn't been very eventful as far as doing any touring and seeing any points of view, but making our way back to Colorado. Anheuser-Busch continues to spiral down a never-ending black hole. I was telling you that it was just a headline that popped up. I really don't drink beer anymore. So I don't really care. I mean, I have opinions on the matter, but I don't drink beer, so. We're out in the town, maybe. But even then. Yeah, I just don't really care for it anymore. Rare ba Babe Ruth rookie card could be the most expensive baseball card ever sold.
31 miles. Sorry. That was dumb of me. Sitting there. The dang console on. Ridiculous. Sorry about that. We're looking for U-52. U-52 right there. And the wind is blowing how? Wind is still blowing. Now the wind is blowing from the west. Doesn't really matter, probably 13. Non-towered airport. I do love this plan. I uh, was mentioning about o using oxygen the other day. They do have oxygen in this plane. It's an inoperative switch. But, you know, flying up this high, uh, anything over 10,000, especially in Colorado, always a good idea. I love this plane. The I, you know, it was never the first plane I wanted to fly, that's for sure. It was because of, you know, getting into Neofly and doing these jobs. It's the, it's really the, the best plane you can have at, at this level until you afford millions and millions for a plane, a big one. Um, this is one of the best planes ever. I just, so yeah, it was never really my first choice on planes I wanted to fly. People describe it as a flying shed, and I get it. But, it, you know, again, if you were to take all the seats out, customize this thing. I mean, not only could you make money, but you could you could live in this thing. Like one that was maybe a little taller. Or like an RV. You can pop things open and just like you land. But anyway, it's, it's just been such an amazing plane.
15 miles. If I can afford one of these in the real world, yeah, that's what I would do. Man, a lot of earthwork going on out here, and this is these are old maps. I wonder what that looks like now. I wonder if that was if that was more farming stuff that they were getting, or what's going on over there. I would love to get brand new Bing maps. It shouldn't be too long. Well, I guess it just depends. You know, companies and national security and privacy and who knows, man. But the, uh, you know, having more and more real time, closer to real time, at least regular ones, you know, weekly, monthly, whatever. Like, well, all the post-processing. Well, eventually AI can, you know, you can set up an AI to do all that. Figure it out. Create a giant automated chain, so.
Disengage the autopilot. Put in 10 degree of flaps. Down trim. Nose down. Oh, and now the wind has changed direction that's coming in. More from the north. Didn't cause us too much problems, but not ideal. Giving us a bit of shove to the left. back to the right a little bit. They have a very nice runway out here. to the center line pilot nice job taxi to parking please hi 
transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. Come on, brakes. This poor joystick, I ha it has such sentimental value to me that I just, you know, until it gives up the ghost, I'm just so reluctant. And even once it gives up the ghost, to then not put it on a pedestal somewhere, it's the sentimental value of it. Unless I can figure out a way or find somebody that knows how to clean these things and get the springs reworked and get it working properly again. That brake button just wants to stick. I could probably switch it over to another button that I don't use so much. One that's still functioning properly. will do. All right. All right, let's get paid. Got to turn on our landing lights again for that. Typical. We're going to get much better about that. I'm, I'm too lazy. Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. I believe that is secure. And that'll do it for today. Start your engine. Nah, I think we're done for the day here. Our job is done. Let's back up our progression. It's pretty good about saving its progression, even if you just close it out. But you want to be certain that you're backed up under um, settings down here. All right, so Neo flies closed. Let's get our uh, guy for sim server closed. That's done. Okay, Sky Vector closed. Bush Talk Radio closed. Nobody chatted today with me, but hello anyway. Let me close the chat. 
Don't really need to mix, mess with the sound mixer anymore. And now let's come into here. Do, 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 do. And adjust this. Yeah, 74. Oh, the stretch. Need to stretch. So, yeah. I wonder if we can make it back. Usually, it took like three or four days. Pardon me, I gotta move the mic for a minute. It took us like three days. Get out there. I wonder how far we'll make it back. We can make it back to Colorado tomorrow. A pretty productive day. Still forgot to use those stream markers to mark things. But there wasn't a whole lot of points of interest today. Very chilled, sleepy. Sleepy kind of day. But thank you for tuning in and... Uh, nothing comes up same time tomorrow about 10 a.m. Sorry if there was any choppiness during the stream today. Keep your fingers crossed with the whole regards to the um, pretzel music stuff. Seriously, cross those fingers. Need all the luck I can get and all the help I can get. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.